I was going to start the show a completely different way, but before the show started, we got a report from the Globe and Mail's Robin Doolittle. I'll just read the tweet. Breaking, five members of the 2018 World Junior Team have been told to surrender in London, Ontario. Police, uh, sorry, surrender to London, Ontario police to face charges of sexual assault, according to two sources. Now, when you get deeper in, the players have not been charged as of yet, but they've been given a timetable as to when they'll need to show up by. Um, now, when we handle this story, I think it's really important that that you know that at the time of this recording, which is approximately 11.45 a.m., um, uh, by the time you listen to it, it'll be hours in the future, there's a very good chance that you know like 100 times more than we do. And it's also really important uh, that we don't speculate. So I'll tell you what we know right now, and then we will have to leave it because there's no, nowhere to go. We're not going to speculate on something like this. We speculate on trades and free agency and all that stuff and hirings and firings, uh, but not something as serious as this. What we do know is that two players in successive days left their NHL clubs. One gave no reason as to why the other cited mental health. Danny Briere, uh, so the, the, two t the two player names are Carter Hart and Dylan Dubé. Uh, that's out there. That's public knowledge. Um, Danny Briere said this. Uh, we are aware of this morning's press reports. So this is pretty recent. We will respond appropriately when the outcomes of the investigations are made public. The NHL has been very clear that teams should refer all investigation related questions to them, which is smart because the NHL wants to um, not have 30 different messages out there. Right. Both players that I mentioned were members of the World Junior uh, eight, uh, 2018 Canadian team. However, important to know. It is not known as of the time of this recording whether their absences are related to this or not. We do not know. Yeah, we don't know the five players. Right? That's right. So story. we also know that another member left his, uh, another member of that World Junior team left his Swiss team this morning and is heading back to Canada. That's former senator, and he's a reserve player for them, I guess. Yeah. Um, they Alex allowed him to go and do that they because still they don't want him on yeah. the team. have his rights, but he doesn't have a contract. Yeah. Yeah. Alex yeah. Formanton, mm -hmm. who was a member of the World Junior Team. Ryan McLeod and Cal Foote were not a part of a team event last night, and they are not on the ice today. Um, For the New Jersey Devils. That's right. Ryan Hinman has that. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Amanda Stein and Ryan Hinman were ret retweeting that, so I want to make sure I cited those properly. Both of those players were also members. Now, as of this point, that's all we know. People are attempting to connect dots uh, that may or may not be there. So, like I said, we're only going to tell you what we know, which is what we've done. I think, obviously, people are going to look at this and go, well, all of the players that you mentioned are, you know, members of that team. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're connected to this. As, as soon as I saw uh, five players are expected to turn themselves in or whatever, um, I'm like... Well, it's not going to take long for this to get extremely sloppy. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not going to take long for, I mean, all these teams are still playing games and they're having practices and they're running drills and everyone's going to see who's missing and who isn't. Yeah. So uh, I want to encourage you to take extreme caution over the next few days as this story formulates and plays out. This is not some trade rumor. This is very serious. Somebody's life was forever changed by this incident. And out of respect for them and their story, I think it's important uh, that we uh, that we don't go and jump to conclusions here. Um, I'm not saying that you trust authority without questioning. I'm saying you have to let some stories play out and just say nothing. And we, uh, like I said, we don't know that any of these players are a part of the investigation, but their absences and their connections to the 2018 World Junior uh, uh, Canadian team are certainly notable. I think we can say that. Uh, but as of this time, we, we really don't know. So uh, as I said before, it's a foregone conclusion. By the time this episode airs, you're going to know more than we do. So that's what we're going to say for now. Yeah, However, and we don't know the deadline that they have to report by these five players. Like there's a there's a deadline that's been given to these players and it's undisclosed right now. And also, we don't know what happens if they don't report. You know, those two things are undisclosed. And that was in the uh, in the report there. Um, so, uh, agreed. And, uh, the one thing that did happen today, almost identical, like almost at the exact same time was the news that 
Salt Lake, the owner of the Utah Jazz, uh, basically is is applying for and they're beginning the process of the expansion process to bring a team to the state. Now, if the Arizona Coyotes, if their uh, if their arena deal hadn't worked out, this guy wanted a piece. He wanted either buy in buy the whole franchise and move them, or buy into the franchise and move them. Now it looks as though he just wants to bring a team in. We'll talk about the team part in a second. Because I don't think that anybody's upset about the fact that there'd be another team, unless you're like one of those people that just doesn't like expansion for whatever reason. I don't think anybody's upset about that. I think it's not the story this morning. The PR blunder here, whether it was intended or not, and I know a lot of people will believe it's intended. I just don't know. Um, is that they announced this on the same day as the London police report coming out now. The it's London, not even the same day. It's within an, an hour. hour. Yeah. Within yeah. an hour of both of it coming out. Now, it's possible, being a great reporter like Robin Doolittle is, that she had sources uh, that the London police were not expecting this to get out, that the legal teams for the NHL and the players who are potentially involved were not expecting this to get out. And so that's why, you know, this would be an agreed time to put this out. So I think that's likely what happened here. Yeah. But all the same, it's a huge... It's a... It's a is it a huge nightmare? I don't know if it's a huge nightmare PR wise long term for them, but I do think it's 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 just another one of those times where you go, you guys can't get out of your own way. Well, did the NHL uh announce the Utah thing? No, it's Smith Entertainment it, Group is the is the group that is bidding or trying to they've engaged in talks with Gary Bettman to bring an expansion franchise to Salt Lake. So they today was their press conference to talk about, hey, we've been doing this and we want an NHL franchise. Um, what I, Ashley Smith and Ryan Smith are of Smith Entertainment Group. So this is me taking my tinfoil hat off. We can all see the obvious incentive for the NHL to want to be like, ah, da, 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 and try to um, have one story drown out another. There is no incentive for the Smith Group to do that. No. There is... They're Zero. probably beside themselves right now. I'm I'm lost as to why the NHL wouldn't inform them to just like, hey, don't do it right now. They might not have knew. known. I don't, I don't think, think they, they knew. knew. I think Robin Doolittle, she preempted the public announcements from the London police and the NHL. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a London police press conference here that is moved up. One thing that's interesting in the Sportsnet article on this report is that Sportsnet contacted the London police on Tuesday night. So there were rumors from reporters that something was coming. Mm -hmm. That said, I heard from a source this summer that it was imminent. Yeah. And that the teams had been informed and that they had told their PR teams, get ready. So... It, so dude it's so messy the time, yeah yeah it's so incredibly messy like i remember talking to you guys last year about this and thinking like if this isn't done by the end of the summer there's something weird well like I but i i don't mind them taking their time on investigations <laughs> either and getting it right it's it's very easy to like one of the one of the conspiracy theories i've heard put out there um back when we all thought it was going to break in the summer is the nhl wants to get through the season, they want to get through the playoffs, and then the story can break. But thinking about it with a cool head, the NHL has no authority oh, no. to do that. Like, is corruption a thing that exists? Of course it is. Of course it is. They have absolutely no authority to be like, hey, can you charge these people with a crime that could see them in prison for decades later because it affects hockey. Do it in August like, when, when our season's on pause. Like, yes. Have, it, you can't say that. Yeah. Corruption is absolutely a thing. I'm just not convinced that's what happened here. And if we find information to the contrary, we'll present it. Mm -hmm. But um, I... You you can be not convinced at this point. Yeah, and I think like, that there's nothing wrong with skeptical. that. Skeptical. I think you don't need a hot take on this. It's yeah. okay. I think the timing is nothing short of a nightmare for the Salt Lake group. This yes. couldn't. Yep. This couldn't have gone worse for them, um, because this makes them look bad. It makes the league that they're trying to join look bad. And also, and this is the encouraging part: people are too smart. People are too smart for that. Um, I think 
this news breaking um, draws more attention to the Hockey Canada story, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, well, it should. How will that play on TV and the radio? I don't know. But online, audiences are too smart for that. They're too media literate. Um, and they're also too untrusting of the powers that be in this league because of the way things have gone down in uh, recent years. I'll tell you um, what I'm annoyed by. What's that? I got a text from somebody this morning who is a, a casual fan. Casual fan. Casual mats. Not casual mats. Oh. Just a casual fan. <laughs> of us or the NHL? Casual NHL fan. Oh, Got it. All right. And they said, well, I hope this leads to a cleanup in the NHL. And I said, while I I understand what you're saying, and I'm sure the NHL's got a ton of work to do on that, mm -hmm. the reality of the situation is the NHL did not employ these players when these acts were committed. And what I'm annoyed by is that the NHL is handling this when Hockey Canada needs to be the one under the microscope. And I'm not saying like, oh, trust the NHL blindly. You know me. You know my views. But I am annoyed that Hockey Canada is, is not the one that's the centerpiece of this because it was their organization, it was their power structures, and it was their failure mm -hmm. that led to this ultimately. As an organization, they are the ones that are most to blame here. And I know that these players have been drafted and they've got contracts in the show. I get that. I totally get that. And I get, but I just hope as of right now, I've not even heard Hockey Canada really mentioned in, right. in anything. They, they've, and that's what I'm annoyed They've by. been mentioned that there will be sanctions to these players and that they'll be banned from Hockey Canada events for like the rest of their careers and all that stuff. But like all of that is kind of immaterial in my mind. It's like, okay, you're banning somebody from playing for Ho Team Canada when they would never play for Team Canada for the rest of their lives in any kind of tournament. Yeah, so or... Like, or what's the point of the ban? Again, you're banning the player. What about Hockey Canada? Yeah, where are the sanctions? What about the, the people doing the international bans? Mm -hmm. Well, I here, uh, I agree with you, Adam. And that, that I, might change. I'm just saying that just at this moment as of this recording. I agree with you, and Hockey Canada is going to take their lumps. I think the reason the attention is on the NHL right now is these guys... Uh, someone might have bought one of their jerseys yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Someone might have got their kid... Uh, the jersey of one of these players. Autograph, whatever. Uh, yeah, got their kid this jersey for Christmas. You, you know what I mean? Um, Hockey Canada has... I mean, I don't know if you could ever uh, pay a price for this, but there have been fines. They have lost sponsors. They have been in front of uh, Parliament for hearings. They have sort of already begun the process and blown out their leadership group which is yeah. and they blown out their the leadership board group. entirely yeah it's yeah. a whole group new, new group of people yeah like uh, you know lopping off heads like they have already begun their journey down the path to i i'm not sure what the word is here probably not redemption but mm -hmm. um the uh, consequence they have already begun their path down the road of consequences there hasn't been that with the NHL. We what we have right now, we don't have concrete details. Uh, we have assumptions that are dangerous to put out there, but I think it's unreasonable to expect people to not have their own assumptions within themselves. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's unreasonable to expect people to not talk amongst themselves with their own theories about this. I have my own. And there are several, I don't know what you would call them, macro stories. There are several stories associated with this that begin with Hockey Canada but end with the NHL. There could be lawsuits here. There could be untold numbers of consequences here. But we're not going to have any idea what any of those things are until we learn names and details exactly. and we don't the, have right now. And with the NHL side from a hockey perspective, as I was just saying with like team Canada, them banning from them from team Canada and that sort of stuff, the NHL is the only one who can dole out hockey punishments mm -hmm. because all of those players are in the league. Well, some of them are in the league. So if, if you want these players to hurt from a hockey perspective, as well as like a legal perspective, the NHL has to be involved. There needs to be some pressure on them yeah. to dole out some punishment. Okay. 
Uh, I just wanted to, I, that was, there, there was no real rooted in logic to what I was saying there. I just, I'm still frustrated with the whole thing. Well, with that, that particular thing. And I feel like I, you know, even though they've taken acts and rebuilt the board or whatever, this is still a part of their legacy. Mm -hmm. And I still think that they need to own that. And it needs to be them. It shouldn't be forgotten. The, like, listen, if you're Gary Bettman, you are cleaning up Hockey Canada's mess mm -hmm. in a way. You are having to deal with the fallout from maybe not cleaning up the mess. You are having to deal with the fallout from Hockey Canada's mess. You're having to deal with a mess that is not necessarily one of your own doing. Right. Not necessarily. Yeah. There, I mean, <clears throat> there are players who were seemingly ostracized from the league for unknown reasons, yes. we'll say. Yep. And there were players who have very recently gotten contract extensions. Mm -hmm. And that's going to lead to questions. But again, we're getting into a very yeah. dangerous Yeah, so territory. before I get interneted, uh, yeah. you, you know how I feel about NHL uh, and the way it's run and the whole everything that's come before this. So I, I don't feel like I need to repeat it. But I do think that's that's what I think. And I'm going to say it now. The legal process never goes as quickly as you want it. To. Never, 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 never. This is a beginning of a very long process, probably, yeah. too. Now, regarding Utah and regarding that expansion, mm -hmm. uh, Pierre Lebrun tweeted out. He said regarding Utah's expansion request to the NHL, the league would need to go through a process with the Board of Governors, which is something that hasn't happened yet. He said, so we'll see where this goes uh, as far as the next uh, steps with the league and its owner. So basically, this is just him or this is just them saying we're interested and we want to publicly declare that we're interested. Yes. Uh, and then this will be, I would imagine this process with the NHL, the expansion one. I mean, if, if the rumors are to be believed, the, the tag to buy a franchise to get one in through the door in the NHL is a billion dollars. <laughs> and that's before the arena. Now, I, I wonder if they could play out of the basketball where the Jazz play. So well, their plan that was submitted to the NHL includes a brand new arena in Utah. Oh, Because right now the Jazz's arena, it's like it'd be even more wonky than when the Devils were playing in Barclays. Like there's the sight Island. lines. Sorry, the Islanders were, were playing out there. The the sight lines are just awful, and you got to like pull back half of the seats. So, so would this be a situation where? The hockey team plays one place, the Jazz play in another, or are they, is the long-term goal to tear down the current home of the Utah Jazz and build a new hockey basketball facility? I don't know if the Jazz are going to move into the That's proposed in hockey rink. Yeah, they haven't uh, really. I don't think they've gotten that far. I don't know. I just they, they own both teams, so I would assume you want them in one building. I'm just guessing. That's what I, like how big is Salt Lake? Right is is my question. Right, like yeah, is it viable for two uh, twenty thousand seat arenas. I don't know. Right. You know. Well, well, we'll we'll see. I guess, but uh, yeah, maybe you can convert both. Like maybe both are playing under one roof one day, and you never know. But uh, regardless of my all son. that, um, uh, the um, arena contrition. Like, it's funny, 20-year-old arenas. It used to be that, like, you know, when we went to Maple Leaf Gardens, that building was, like, 60, 70, 80 years old. Now, we're talking about stadiums that are 30 years old as if they're relics and you, they're almost on you. Oh, like, hold, I can't walk into this shithole. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't know when that happened, I guess, because real estate, the profitable thing is to tear down and rebuild, right? Uh, but I, I, I just kind of find it funny that, that it's like, oh man, this we got this new we got this new arena. We're still paying for it thirty years later, but fuck it, let's build another one. Yeah, uh, arena building like they're saying every twenty five years now you need a new arena, which is and it seems bonkers. so quick, you know. No, people are talking about Scotia Bank as one of the older arenas because it and, is amongst the newer arena, and the ice isn't get that good there because it yeah. wasn't meant to be a hockey arena. It was basketball. meant to be basketball, but like, like okay, people talk about Sky Dome that way. The, the yeah, and Center. which is why they're putting 300 million bucks into it over the next, you know, three years or whatever it is. Right. But like, I've never walked in. I walked into Sky Dome and been like, this isn't that nice. But I've never walked in there and been like, this is unusable. Yeah. This is, we can't even, <laughs> I can't even watch a baseball game here. This useless piece of shit. I, they, they put those renos in and I was like, hey, this is nice. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, who paid for the renos? The Rogers family. 
cool. Pa- Let's private keep money. it that way. Private money. Yeah, you know what I would say? I, I, I think what's interesting about the arena conversation is it has very little to do with the average fan's experience. You walk through the door, you sit in your seat, you get, a, you know, get whatever you want to eat. What really... It comes down to is sponsorship op- ship opportunity, sponsorship. See, that's, that's good. Sponsorship <laughs> and um, and sky boxes. Box. The ability to sell those boxes to corporate. And that's how they rate the viability of a market. Like when Jeremy Jacobs a couple years ago said, um, you know, I can't see a team working in Quebec City. He's not saying the fans won't be there. But you have to understand the fans and what they pay compared to what right. these big corporations pay for the box seats and the catering and all the other things that go into that, it like the the box seats pay for it. They're not the sponsorships aiming. pay for it. It isn't the average fan walking in. They're not aiming for me. Like I I have never walked into an NHL arena, and I've walked into many, and thought this place is a shithole. Like there are arenas that people complain about all the time, uh, like uh, Buffalo's. I, I wish we'd been been able to go to the Coliseum. Uh, which one? NASA. In, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. because, just because of the atmosphere. But people said a lot of things were not right with that place. It was old. It was really old. Yeah, but it seems like everyone had a really good time. And like Edmonton's old arena before they got the new one. Mm-hmm. Um, every building I've walked into for a hockey game, I was there for the hockey game, and I was like, "This rules," <laughs> you know. But they're not going for me, right? They don't need to impress me. They need to. Uh, impress the corporations that they fleece for five, six digits every year. Nassau Coliseum, mm-hmm. by the way, was built between 1969 and 1972. Nice. And it was considered a relic, unusable, oh. unprofitable. Oh, yeah. That's old. That's like vintage. They left to go to Brooklyn with seats that you couldn't even see the ice. Mm-hmm. They did that. Rather than play in Nassau and then went back to Nassau and then now finally have UBS, which is wild. And finally. Steve, to answer your question about the basketball team and, and the hockey team, it looks like they're aiming to build two arenas because they want to host the 2034 Olympics in oh, Salt Lake. So the okay. second arena will be built for that plus hockey, and then they'll keep the other one for the jazz, it looks like. So they're they're aiming for two arenas there. Okay, so they can I host I, the Olympics with the two arenas. I do have to butt in with an update uh, from the New Jersey Devils, if I can. Sure. Uh, Michael McLeod and Calfoot have requested and been granted indefinite leave of absences from the team. The club will have no further comment. So just letting you know. Uh, that is, and I want that's 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 going to be coming in all day. Breaking news on this show is sort of useless because it's, yeah. it's <laughs> hours down the road. But we, I do want you to understand when, like, when you're listening to this, how these are playing out as we're going. So you can, it's like listen to this episode like it's a bit of a time capsule, right? We should mention. I believe the CJ show is recording tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so they should have more details, and obviously CJ is an insider, so we should have mm-hmm. more insight. But again, like until we get names. I mean, even if we knew them, we couldn't tell you. Right. And I don't know. I don't know how it works in Canada. And I think it's different in different states. But when people are charged, I'm not sure that I'm not sure how that becomes public record. And I'm and not no sure if it is charged yet. And no one's been charged. Yeah. So so they'll have to turn themselves in. And then if the charges are laid, I don't know if those names instantly become public or not. I don't I know Canadian rules are different, like in the States. After a court case, they can interview the uh, the jurors. Um, they can film in the courtroom. They can do a whole bunch of things that you can't. Like Canada, we still have the sketches. And if I'm not, you mis- know, yes, we do. I, and if I'm not mistaken, everyone involved, because I know this is a common question out there, was 18 or over. Yes. Um, so yep. it wouldn't be a young offenders act uh, sort of thing. Right. <laughs> last, you, you can see us treading water. Last uh, note on depth. Last note on arena talk because I I love arena talk. I love arena talk too. I'm with you, Jesse. It's, it's, it's it's fun stuff. Um, no NHL arena. Well, one NHL arena has been that's currently active has been was built before 1993. Well, played their first game before 1993, and that's really? the Saddle Dome. And then where you don't really count Madison Square Garden because that's never going anywhere. But that was also built before 1993. and renovated multiple times. Exactly. So if yeah. you, there's two really. So every Everything else besides that is built 19 played their first game in 1993 or later. Right. So 30 years is kind of the benchmark for New Arena. Well, and the Saddle Dome was built for the Olympics as well. It is and a good idea. That's going away. Yeah, it's time. It's <laughs> so it's going to be one. It's going to be the, MSG. The problem with the Saddle Dome, Saddle Dome would be fine. I mean, I'm sure, again, corporate box. I never sat in a corporate box at the Saddle Dome. But um, the problem with the Saddle Dome is it looks like a saddle. And it Can't the see. roof yeah. loops down. So like... I remember uh, when Taylor Swift would come through town or ACDC came through town, the big acts, 
they couldn't fit their sound equipment in the arena, so they'd play two dates in Edmonton and zero dates mm -hmm. in Calgary. They couldn't hang their lights. Like, oh, is that what it the, is? The structure that goes like above them, they can't hang it Dude, from the concave saddle. Televised Flames games are so fun and insane. Because the camera's so low, it is. There's, there's Maddie uh, nodding her head. Over. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's so low, so it's zoom. Have you zoom, ever? It's so fast. You ever seen a video of the Flames press box? No. It is literally bolted to the rafters, and you walk out. Ask Julian about it. Uh, you walk out on a bridge that is uh, no several stories down on both sides, and you have to kind of. It's the craziest craziest press box in the whole league. I hate all of that. If you've ever sat in the nosebleeds at Scotiabank, you know those rickety stairs that lead up to the... Oh, yeah. Uh, and, it wants, it. and it's such a, it. it's just such an optical illusion because you feel like you're about to fall oh. when you're going down the steps. Oh, yeah. I really don't like the flames, The Flames press box is wild. A video that I pitched um, at Sportsnet that we never ended up doing and maybe we'll get to do someday is... You ever just been daydreaming at a Jays game and looked up and seen the giant set of stairs that goes all the way up the dome? I, I just want to do a video going up those stairs. Oh, yeah. And I'm terrified of heights. And I want to do it purely for the content. That's how much I love you. That's that how much I love giving you content. That would be nuts. And I, oh, Maddie, I'd have you, to parachute off the thing. I don't think I could climb back down. Maddie, if you want to pull this up, this is from uh, Flames Reddit, Calgary Flames Reddit. This is a view <laughs> from the press box yeah. at uh, the Saddle Dome. And there's the, the bridge just, out there is bonkers. It's insane. Man. <laughs> Oh, Yo, oh Maddie, come on, like Maddie, chime in. Um, no, I just wanted to say though, like I've been to like a few NHL arenas now, but like I know as janky as it is, it's like the most fun hockey game I've ever been to. The oh yeah, the saddle though. It is a party in there. Yeah, they have like flames, like actual flames shooting out whenever they score. Like it's so fun. The sea it's really of for red. The fans there. Yeah, like the Leafs is all business, like for the most part, mm -hmm. but they really make it for the fans. Yeah, no, you can, I mean, especially when the Leafs go on their Western Canada tour, you're like, all right, we're not getting the same clientele from building to building, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. But yeah, I understand why it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. I like that Remax ad, like, hey, you had a game, you super high up, well, here's Remax. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be somewhere else? <laughs> you could be We're the people right you call. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, so, there, you know, as far as expansion in the NHL, too, like, uh, my wife asked me this, this morning. She's like, listen, in other leagues, in other leagues, and you're going to see this a lot. You see this so much. You're going to see, and this is a Damian Cox thing, and I'm going to call him out because this has been his bugaboo for years. He's like, the NHL peaked at 21 teams. There are too many jobs, there are too many players. Stop. So never listen to that, first off, because hockey players are better than they've ever been. Number two, she was like, like are there going to be too many teams? And I said, well, you have to look at the NHL differently than you look at the MLB or the NBA. Because you look at the MLB, one Canadian team, 29 American teams. The NBA, one Canadian team, 29 American teams. The NHL is different because it's got seven Canadian teams already. And people are pushing for an eighth. Then put 29 teams in the States. That's 35, 36 teams, viable markets. And I also look at, like Salt Lake City, when you look at, I don't know who's been there. I've actually been to Salt Lake City. I have not. Um, it was a skiing trip? Uh, yeah, actually. No, it wasn't. We actually had friends out there for a, a long time, and they like moved. We had some friends that were moving around, doing different jobs around the States, which is totally normal in the States. doesn't happen as much here. Um, and when we were there, it's a lot like, you know, it's like a winter city. It, it kind of doesn't make sense that there wasn't a team there. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, like, I understand what you're saying. Kansas is another one where I'm like, I know the Kansas City Scouts existed, but like, kind of think that that should be a team, don't They've you? They've been rumored forever. And I, I got to imagine they're team 34 or 35. So it makes makes a lot of sense. The one market I keep wondering about, I know everybody's talking about Atlanta. Saskatoon! Houston. Oh. I, I, I why, keep throwing out Saskatoon. Why is Houston, I know they've had, didn't they have NH or what was the WHL or no, what was the, what was the competing NHL league? Oh, and WHA? WHA. 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 Yeah. They had a WHA team, but I, I don't know why there hasn't been, that market is enormous. That's a top 10 market in the States. If Atlanta is under consideration, how can Houston not be? And Texas is like the most underrated hockey market. Maybe there is like, they, they have huge hockey programs. A lot of. Uh, pro players are coming out of there. A lot of draft picks too. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how the next few years go. The Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup is back for its eighth season, empowering Canadian minor hockey teams to make a meaningful impact on their communities by doing as many good deeds as possible. The first 150 teams to submit their good deeds will receive a team kit of Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup swag. Ooh. Which is cool. We love that. Yeah. Over the past seven seasons, Chevrolet has donated over $850,000 to charities across the country through the Good Deeds program and the Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup. I always say Goods Deeds. It's Good Deeds. Good Deeds. And the Chevrolet Good Deeds good Cup deeds. Uh, has produced thousands of Good Deeds conducted in communities across the country. Indeed. <laughs> You guys, yeah, was you guys were like you guys did some you guys talked about this a little bit last year but it is really it's a great initiative yeah. it's a lot of fun uh and the kids get involved and it's mm -hmm. it's always a always a good cause this year i'll be entering as a team oh a team yeah. jesse blake I've, I've joined with maddie we are the jesse and maddie dogs mad dogs uh -huh. and we're gonna enter as we're gonna pretend we're 13 year olds um, i think yeah you might be a little too old you can i'm not so sure but yeah you <laughs> for sure if you're wondering how to enter record eligible good deeds and post it to tiktok instagram facebook or x twitter using hashtag good deeds cup or and hashtag contest and remember you have to tag chevrolet canada at chevrolet canada and hashtag your team's name every eligible good deed you your family or your community submits on behalf of your team on social will add one point to your team's collective score on the good deeds cup leaderboard the more points a team collects the better their chances of winning this year's cup one hundred thousand dollars for a registered canadian charity of the team's choice and the title of this year's chevrolet good deeds cup champion visit chevrolet good deeds cup.ca to learn more now I looked at this this morning, and this is the first piece of breaking news I saw this morning, and it's oh yeah, Peter Morazic got a raise. Oh, oh <laughs> that's so many items ago. I know that is uh, yes, yes. Peter I, Morazic, I can't believe I forgot about that. Yeah, Peter Morazic got a raise. I anyone confused by that hasn't been paying attention. Well, and and so I looked it up. Yeah, because I haven't been paying attention to the Blackhawks when Bedard went down. I said. Don't really care. Yep. Fair um, enough. And uh, the contract, which was among the worst that Dubas signed in Toronto, it was a three-year, $11.4 million deal signed in the summer of 2021. Um, $3.8 per. Uh, he 3.8? Yeah, yeah, he's now going up to 4.25 for the next two years. Now, I looked at his stats. He's got a 907 save percentage on a horrific like a, a really really bad team I, he's an up and down goalie but um the the thing i kept hammering with him is there's there wasn't much evidence to suggest he's this bad and what? then he kept playing and kept being shocking well with the leafs he had an 888 save percentage <sighs> which we would have killed for at times this season his first year with the blackhawks 894 save percentage. That was last year. Better. Bad. I mean, not much better, I but mean, it's I know better. They were bad, but it's bad. Well, you ever heard of baby steps out? This year, what's the average save percentage in and about? It's like 904. He's got a 907. He's been like in the same way that Blackwood has been good for the Sharks, Mrazic has been good for the Blackhawks. Like Bedard on so many nights has been the only reason the Blackhawks are in games. Uh, Mrazic's maybe reason number two. The smartest thing I think the Chicago Blackhawks are doing right now is the veterans they are signing, they're keeping them for a couple of years. Dickinson, mm -hmm. uh, Felino, uh, Felino, I think two more years after this one that he just signed. He just yep. extended, yeah. And then Mrazic. And you're going, okay, so I don't think we're going to be very good until two years from now, and we might challenge for the playoffs. It'd be great to have these guys around. They're but right. then, then they're not tethered to anyone. Yep. Whereas you compare and contrast with the Ottawa Senators who signed everybody to long-term deals, <laughs> and oh. you kind of get into a cap bind very quickly. They overpaid for Dickinson. They overpaid for Perry when they signed him. They overpaid for Felino, And I think... I, I mean, I guess they're right in line with goaltending, but this feels like an overpay for Mrazic. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, if you if you follow, if you read some of the reporters like um, Mario Tarabassi and Ben Pope, the guys mm -hmm. who, who write about the Blackhawks day in and day out and cover the team, you'll see that Kyle Davidson has been working on 
rewarding the guys who've worked hard all season for the team and the veterans who are not going to be a part of the long term future, but say, hey, you've worked hard here. We're going to keep you around for a few years while we intend on sucking. And I think that's not a bad strategy. Like the one thing that Kyle Davidson has done very well is tearing it completely down to the bone and being really bad and getting the Bedard pick. And now this year, his new thing is we're going to still be bad, but we're going to have veterans around our young players to usher them into the new era three years from now, which and I think he's done a great job with this. I think he also probably looked around out there uh, because teams need goalies. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet teams wanted Mrazek. Mm -hmm. And there's a trade chip you have next season. Well, similar to uh, the Habs with Montembo. They're like, you know what? We'll just keep him. Mm -hmm. And now there's two perfectly at least league average goalies who are off the market. It's tough out there, man. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if the Blackhawks were to trade Mrazek, they'd just be spending the next God knows how long trying to find a goalie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You need somebody to play on your team. No matter how bad you are, you need yeah. still need NHL player. Is you that, do. Is this is the goalie they're going to ride with. Now, and and is he a good guy? Is he good in the dressing room? And and he yeah. seems fun. And it seems like those are the people they want around, which is great for the culture. One of the things I'm I'm interested in because we haven't seen it so much, but I guess we're seeing it happen with the Blackhawks is bad teams overpaying for guys that like like a player, if you're a player, you have to make a choice. Yes. Right? If you want to play for a good team, good team's probably going to be up against the cap. And if you're a, a player who's inconsistent or middling as Mrazek is, and I don't mean that as an insult. He's not a superstar, but he's not he's not below re like replacement level. He's usually He's fine. in the middle. When the Leafs initially signed him, I'm like, eh, it's a little expensive, but he's fine. But the point I'm trying to make here is the players will have to make a choice here where it's like, oh, I'll, I could go to a bad team and make more money or I can go to a good team and make less. And it seems like teams are starting to get wise to that. Like, yeah, you want to come play for a winner. You are going to have to accept less unless you're the Leafs. Well, uh, and <laughs> it, it, but you, you know, it's th this reminds me a little bit of uh, Tyler Bozak, actually. OK, who, who made with a round, Louis? Uh No, with the Leafs. And, and I'll tell you why. Um, so he signed an extension. I can't remember for how long, but it was four point two million dollars. Got his jersey number in the contract. Um, but for his production, it was an overpay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, it's an overpay for production, but is it an overpay for his job? Because his job is number one center of the Toronto Maple Leafs mm -hmm. at the time. Now, a lot of people were like, yes, but he shouldn't be. And I'm like, right there with you. But he's getting paid for workload as well. Peter Mrazek, I... That's an overpay, in my opinion. But he's all, he's also going to be the starting goalie for the Blackhawks for the next couple of years, right? So, wh what are you what are you expecting to sign for league min? I don't I don't think that's how any of this works. No, I no. mean he's. Uh, I mean, I would love to whatever inflation grade he's getting a raise on. I think we would all love to be paid. On that, he yeah, goes from three point eight to four point two five. Yeah, um, but I mean, he his job is to not only be the starting goalie for his team, but be the starting goalie for a bad team. That means you face a fuckload of shots. Yeah, and you have a it's a it's a mentally draining thing, especially as a goalie. And like yeah. to lose all the time, you play super well and you lose. That sucks. And we've seen teams give out big number deals. Mm -hmm. To I, this is tinfoil hat. Now we've seen teams give out big number deals to uh, players and specifically goalies who are kind of injury prone. Interesting. He's had a healthy run of it, but like he's been injured a few times. Mm -hmm. That goes on LTIR. All of a sudden you have a little bit, bit of wiggle room. I don't think the Blackhawks wince at that number at all. No, and I don't think they care. The term especially is great. And, and then the, the cap is so irrelevant to the Blackhawks. Oh, Nobody's yeah. signed. Like, they have so much room. They need to be, because the, the, the NHL is sort of wide open when it comes to trade deadline, at least right now. Like, if the next six weeks it changes. But there could be a lot of teams in on it. The, the, the Chicago Blackhawks need to be in on salary retention. Pull as many assets oh, out of this deadline. They as need you to can. hit the floor. Like that's something yeah. that they got to be concerned about. Yeah, I, I, I think you, you get in there and be the third team on a bunch of like call Kyle Dubas, which I know uh, Kyle Davidson will because uh, they <laughs> they tell they, everyone about. They go way back, and I think that there's a, um, I think that there's uh, you know a huge opportunity for them at the at the trade deadline to just 
compile assets. What? What are you looking at? So I'm looking at their uh, their cap friendly page. Projected cap hit seventy five point one million. Projected LTIR used zero dollars, mm-hmm. uh, pr- which is crazy. Have they just not put any of their because the half their team's injured? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They need to hit the floor. Yeah. Holy they can't be shit. taken away from the salary and putting it on LTIR because yeah. they need to hit the floor of the salary so cap. Current cap space. Eighteen million six hundred and eighty-one thousand deadline cap space, thirty-eight thousand two hundred f- or sorry, thirty-eight million two hundred fifty-three thousand four hundred forty dollars. Holy shit! Yeah, I'm thinking they might be active, and Jesse's got their draft picks up. Wow, boy, there's a lot of Leaf logos there, but they have their own first in Tampa's first three seconds this year, two thirds. Their own first and the Leafs first in 2025. God, really? The Blackhawks and Stars second round pick and a third. In 2026, they have their own first three seconds and their own third. And they got two fourths in 2025 and 2026. And they're going to add to that. Hey, wouldn't... They're the new uh, Coyotes. Okay, so maybe (laughs) they add draft picks to that. But that's... Some of those guys, if they're drafting them, say, in 2025, they may not play till regularly until 2030. So I'm wondering if they're going to start asking, hey, you want to retain salary with us? We need prospects. Look at the players who are signed for next season. Oh, God. Like, there's a whole shit ton of RFAs and nobody else. I, uh, Adam, what I think they'll do is what the Coyotes did, Mm -hmm. which is um, they're like, well, we're not going to use all of these picks. So, like, you have the option to trade up. Uh, Okay. You have the option to be off-season buyers. Trade up? Kyle Dubas would never. No? Well, oh, man. Man. If you want to move up, <laughs> Kyle's your guy. Call yeah, him. Absolutely. I mean, I think we might have just broken a trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that movie? Minority Report? Uh, Except yes. we don't do crimes. We do trades. Yeah. We're, yeah. The, we're the triplets in the Minority Report. Yeah. I know when Dubas is going to trade back before he does. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think we just too. figured it out. That's it. That's it right there. We got Reese, him. Reese Johnson is a good name for who he play for. Oh, yeah. If I told you Reese Johnson. <laughs> I wouldn't have got it. No. <laughs> what, what league does he play in? Like, who is that person? <laughs> Cole Gutman, I would have got. Yeah, we've talked about Cole Gutman. He's been a, a staple of the SDP. Zach Sanford. Jacob Menga. Meg, Megna. Megna. Mania, I think. I don't know. Don't know who that is. Uh, he's. You need uh, to watch more uh, Blackhawks games, man. He's, They're he's, so interesting. <laughs> uh, he, I, he was in the Canucks system for a long time. Jacob I think. Was, yeah. uh, I don't know about a long J-A-Y. time. He was definitely there. He spells it J A Y C O B. Yeah, that's a yeah. weird way to spell J. J as in blue J, Cobb as in corn. Hey, did anybody ever predict that Jared Tenorti would be the second highest paid defenseman on an NHL team? Holy, I mean, yes. No, Steve nobody did. predicted that. <laughs> but not Steve recently. <laughs> oh, oh, why did you? Think I mean, Jared- back back when he was a, I think he was a first round pick. He was. He was Montreal. No. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. On IR. Holy Santa Claus shit. Taylor Hall, <laughs> Tyler Johnson, Nikita Zaitsev, Connor Murphy, Andreas Athanasiu. No, what did you call me? Not to be confused with George. George Athanasiu, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Bavillier, <laughs> uh, and Connor Bedard. That's uh, a whole. And, uh, and then there's season opening. Yeah. Um, Samuel Savoie and Luke Phillip. I just want to say this. Too. Luke Phillip, create a player. I, I, yeah, Luke 100%. Phillip. For sure. <laughs> By the way, I do want to say, I want to throw this out there. I was right. He was drafted. Tenori was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. And hey, I'm hey, just five. pointing it out because I rarely get draft picks right. Jesse, when you look at that. Sure. Okay. So Zaitsev, by the way, that's the last year of the deal he signed in Toronto. Oh, okay. yeah. 4.5. Yeah. Connor Murphy's an interesting one because that guy is signed longer term and they do need people. Although you wonder if he's going to ever want to get out and do something. I wonder about a guy like Tyler Johnson. Like, depending upon, he's been injured so many times, but that's a guy that can play, as you see on Cap Friendly, right wing, center, left wing. Is that not the kind of guy that you sign? Like, Tyler, listen, two more years, we'll overpay. You're a warm body and you can play second or third line. We just don't know how it all is going to play out. Is that not a guy you go, and, you, and, you go and re-sign? And we'll trade you to like Dallas if you want. Yeah. Something like that. At, at the trade deadline in a couple of years. So I was just distracted by Jesse. Can you scroll down a little bit? Sure. Um, even more good news on the cap for the Blackhawks. Oh, wow. Uh, 
I forgot they had a recapture penalty for Duncan, Duncan Keith. Keith yeah. That's oh. going to come off the Because he went to Edmonton and retired, and then that kicked in a recapture yeah. to Chicago. They bought out Henrik Borgstrom. That's coming off. They bought out Brett Connolly. That's coming off. They the bought Josh out Bailey? Josh Bailey. When the fuck? <laughs> when did they buy out Josh that. Bailey? They must <laughs> so, hold on, hold on. He'll still be on the books next year, but they save a million because they'll be paying him a million less. Um, And Jake McCabe was on there, too. He's got two years left. Wait. So the Islanders bought him out, but took the salary. I have no idea. Dude. Oh, this contract was bought out by the Chicago Blackhawks in June of this year. We must have missed it. It was at the draft, June 29th. I do seem to remember some sort of deal there. Wow, dude! Like you. Oh yeah. So in June, Josh Bailey was traded to the Blackhawks from the Islanders for future considerations and a second round pick in 2026, and then they subsequently bought him out. Dude, that's how that works. Wow. The see now that we've said all of that, Mrazek's not getting paid enough. Yeah, I agree. He's got to he's got to be the starting goalie for that. And and it's not. You know what I mean? Better. It's no, really not. It's super not. Well, I mean, but it is. Yeah, Connor Bedard, Kevin Kurczynski, Lucas Reichel, question mark. Like, there's lots of guys who are going to get in there, um, and there's going to be even more. Yeah, picks. yeah. It's it's uh, Chicago is is a fascinating thing if you're just into different ways of doing things. What I respect about Kyle Davidson is I don't believe his background was generally hockey, and uh, he just doesn't do things the same way that you're used to seeing things in the NHL. No, I like that. He's just some guy who showed up to the draft. Remember? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, just some guy. Oh, the, when when he was interviewed in Nashville and they didn't know who he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have. Man, he's way too young looking, and pr- frankly, way too young to be a GM by traditional standards, which is awesome. But it's Good also, for him. it's almost like uh, casual fishing, I would call it. Right. Because he was in a T-shirt. When was the last time you ever saw an NHL general manager in a T-shirt? No, they're always in their team issued golf shirt. Yeah, you ever seen Lou Lamorello in like a? You know, no, turtleneck. you only see Lou in a, t- in a suit and tie. That's it. That's and how he goes to the beach. I, Kyle <laughs> Davidson does come from hockey right out of university. He interned for the Ottawa Senators. Oh, he does? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So there was something where he was working for baseball or so. There's some crazy thing. His story is interesting. Is yeah, I, I have to. I actually have to. I meant to do it a research thing between yesterday and today, but there was some sort of thing where he's like he's got a whole different pathway. And that's why he's so fascinating. And I'm I'm interested to see how this all plays out in in uh, Chicago. I think you might be thinking of somebody else. Am I? Because there, is there, he all hockey? There yeah. Have been several, and I must be thinking about a different guy. Yeah. Several intersport stories. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think I it's Kyle Davis. Baseball thing. Thing. Anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll look into it. Uh the Flames. Listen, if you're a Calgary Flames fan and you watched last night's game, nobody can relate to you more than the three people on this panel and all of Leafs Nation. Um. For us, it was 4-1, so that's even worse. Mm. But the Calgary Flames, I feel like last night was the first loss where it felt like it could be a dent in their playoff hopes for real. Yeah? For real. Like, they, they've been very mid. Very mid team. Yes. But they're but, not. But they're like, we're in it. Like, we're going to sign Noah Hannafin. Don't worry. They're we're, far back in the standings, but like numerically, it's possible. It's totally possible. They're like a couple of points out of the wild card because of parity, right? Yeah. And, and you know, they sold Zadorov, but they've won some games. And Sharon Govich has been a really nice. He got his 20th goal last night, which is really impressive. Uh, you, you, I felt for Mackenzie Weger after the game because he like he messed up. And, 11 goals. I know, season I know, um, but um, for the Flames, like I felt like last night was the shit got real game. Hmm. And I don't know if that wakes them up or not, but it does sort of feel like this morning, like, ooh, you can't be giving up that to St. Louis. The Flames had one good stretch all season. They were bad at the beginning and then now they're on a three game losing streak and they had a good little stretch from in like December and early January. Yeah. Like they've been generally not very good this season. Agreed. But they are four points out of the wild card spot. Yeah, they're also tied for seventh. Yeah. Oh, in the division. Well, listen, oh. there might be a bunch of teams ahead of them. Or I'm just the saying there's only a four-point spread. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it it matters. Um, but that was one of the things we pointed out with the Oilers earlier in the season is it's not how many points back they are. It's how many teams they have to leapfrog. And now I look up at the standings and, oh, there they are way up there. They did it. Um, but now Calgary has to do it. And I don't think people were saying the same things about them that they were saying about the Oilers. The Oilers are plus 30 in goal differential. 
that seemed impossible. <laughs> and now they've won 14 straight friggin' games. I think it would be a disservice to the long-term future of the Calgary Flames if they thought this team had a shot at doing anything Dude, in the playoffs. They, like, they need to stick with what the plan was early on, and that's to sell off assets and try and kick this thing down the road to be good later. They so get on my nerves. Yeah. Oh, we're thinking about keeping this together, and we're going to trade this guy. No, we're going to... Oh, just fucking stop. Just knock it off. Mm -hmm. You're not good. Stop. Mm -hmm. Stop. No, it's stop playing like, coy and hard. You stink. That's enough. You you stink, and you're not supposed to. There are so many teams. Well, like I think we're going to talk about Montreal later. Yeah. Th there's a bunch of teams at different spots in their rebuild, right? Where you rebuild towards something you got a goal in mind the flames are not there they can they have two options uh well three stay the course and be shit um they're not shit the problem is they're, they're, that's the problem they're not shit enough yeah but give it time they okay. need to get shittier is yeah. what it looks like well, to me the, like you got to commit to the rebuild yeah Re well, you could retool. Retool. Oh, sure. God. I don't know if they're so bad that they need to completely rebuild, mm -hmm. but I think we all agree they can't just do nothing. Well, that's it's crazy. And, and, and so when they talk about, oh, we want to resign Noah Hannafin, and I think you were getting to that. So you could Stop. be, you could do nothing and be, and be shit. What else can you do? What's he going to do? Play for less? Stop. Oh, he's going to play for more. It's over. Why would he, like, he's going to sign for. He's going to sign a, a big fat deal. Well, like all of the, oh yeah, like Lindholm might stay and oh yeah, Hannafin might stay too and Han and Tanev might. All right. You do you. You do and, and refuse to take Brad's phone calls mm -hmm. and be all weird about that. Yes, I'm making it about the Leafs. I don't <laughs> they, they, you can tear it all down and I think they do very well. Mm -hmm. You could retool and I could still see them doing really well. Like as long as you have like Kadri's contract, Markstrom, mm -hmm. Huberto, Uyghur. Like, I don't think they're a team that has to bottom out, if I'm totally honest, but you got to do something. You can't just, oh yeah, like Peltier and Coronado and Zari are, are just going to save the entire franchise. Don't forget Dustin Wolf And Dustin Wolf, yeah. who, again, we treated... Too much in the way that I treated Devin Levi, where I was like, oh, he's going to come in, be great immediately, and save the day. That's just not how it works. No. Especially for goalies. Especially for goalies. It's just not how it works. Is he going to be great? I think so. I think Levi's going to be great, too. But it's unreasonable to expect him to come in and be a brick wall immediately. Well, and it's like you look at Spencer Knight, who had who looked great. Uh, and then, and it has looked great, but he's, even he's taking time to develop, it right? It takes, it does take time. It's so difficult. Yeah. The biggest goals. problem with the flames right now is that Markstrom's too good. Like this calendar year so far, like he's been unreal. I think he's five and two, uh, oh, in, in 2023 and with, uh, like a nine twenty save percentage or something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been good as he's been propping them up. And if they, if they want to make. If they want to retool, they have to make decisions with the rest of the roster. And if they want to keep Markstrom, that'll keep them in some sort of contention because mm -hmm. of the the three point system that the NHL has. That they're always kind of hang around because they have good goaltending. But if the goaltending falls off, they'll be where they were last year. Yeah. But if they want to go a different direction with the franchise, then they're gonna have to take a step back, and that might include trading Markstrom. And this they is this is the problem, though, Jesse. I agree with you on all of those points. The problem is my perception is that Flames management are letting him decide that. Mm -hmm. And that's where Flames, what the Flames have done, and I, and I understand who our general manager is here in Toronto, I'm aware. Uh, there seems to be a self-diluted thing where you're like, I, we are, no, we are this team. Whenever they lose, we're not that team. Whenever we win, that's the team we are. And I, and I, <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out if they're aware of their own identity. If they are, like Craig Conroy has been, he was a great player for them. He was the AGM for them for 10 years 10 or whatever years. it was. 10 years, 2014, he was hard. Sometimes, like, and he brought in Dave Nonis. And I I have my opinions on Dave Nonis and Dave Nonis' record in Toronto. Not great. Nope. Vancouver fans have their own thing with Dave Nonis. Like, that's your big, 
That's the big set of eyeballs that you're bringing in to look at this project from the outside. I just, what I'm thinking and what it seems like the Flames are doing is they're letting this season play out and they're letting the direction, depending upon how they're doing, oh, we had a good December. Well, we're going we're gonna re-sign Hannafin now. Oh, we're having a, a good January. And let's say they have a bad February. Well, let's trade them all. Like this is not how you run a team long term. Well, you one can't of the, do that. One of the criticisms of, of Brad Treleving that we heard when he got hired is uh paralysis through analysis. Mm -hmm. Um he takes too long to do things, he he overanalyzes himself into oblivion, and um he spends too much time analyzing and no time acting. Uh, I think <laughs> it might be an organizational issue in, in Calgary as well, whether he started it or not. Um, they've just been, all we've heard is rumors mm -hmm. outside of Zadorov. All we've heard is maybe, 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 maybe. And now we're here in January and Zadorov still the only thing they've done. Um, Leafs too. Yep. Uh, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but this but, isn't about the Leafs. It really is about the Flames. Well, you have two teams in two different places. Yeah. Right? You have the Flames who we all thought were a cup contender or like in the conversation. And now it's been 18 months, 24 months. And we now know they're not. They're not. They don't seem to know that just yet. They don't seem to know what the path forward is. Um. They're not, they have some of the pillars that you need for success. They got a starting goalie who's making saves for them. They have at least one stud defenseman mm -hmm. in Uyghur. And um, Hannafin's pretty damn good. He's pretty damn good. Like, I mean, okay, <clears throat> you're keeping Hannafin? You want to keep Hannafin? Tanev's gone. He's got to be gone. I'll get on board with keeping Hannafin. Tanev's gone. He's the prime candidate. He's what, 34? You got to sell now. Dude, like he's perfect retool fodder. Stop. Get rid of him. Um, even if you were to get rid of Lindholm, you have Kadri. Um, you have to build around Huberto. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that thing is... <laughs> You're married. That, that contract married. is chiseled into rock. Yeah, it's divorce-free. It no, it's not going anywhere. Um, and you have several pieces of the future that are already there that are going to be good. I don't know how good make a move. Stop. We're going to keep this guy. That guy. Stop. Stop. No one believes you. It's over. Yeah. And I think they're trying to keep, keep their prices up by saying, well, we could here. Hey, you know how you can keep your price up? Say nothing. Say nothing. I think for three weeks uh, to start the year, they've been like the lead story on headlines. So they're not saying nothing. There's information <laughs> leaking. Like headlines with Elliot Freeman on Saturday night. I don't know if that's intentional by them, but somebody's talking. The I don't think the Flames drink out of a glass. What do you mean? No, they drink out of their hands. And, this, <laughs> and they wonder like, why all their clothes are wet. <laughs> it's one of the leakiest organizations out there right now. Yeah, and just up the road, the Edmonton Oilers have won 14 in a row. Man, oh man. Like they can't. I I I we I don't know what else we can say to the, about them that we can't we didn't say yesterday, but yeah. wow, we don't make enough <laughs> of the fact that the Edmonton Oilers ended the Calgary Flames franchise. That yeah, ever, man. Ever yeah. since that loss in the playoffs, yeah, the Calgary Flames have been in a tailspin and have never recovered. Every now and then, you see a playoff series break a team. Um, I I always think of. Um, the Nashville Predators and Pecorine breaking the Blackhawks dynasty. He broke it. He broke it. Um, the Blackhawks were coming off of their third cup in five years or six, whatever it was. And Rene just refused to allow any goals. I don't feel like doing it this week. And that series was over in four or five. And the Blackhawks proceeded to do some of Adam's least favorite trades ever. <laughs> and that was it. It broke their brains. That was it. It was over. I'm trying to think of some other ones. I know there are others in recent memory. Um, the Flames losing that series to Edmonton. Over. They've never recovered. They've never looked the same. 
Never for a moment. The uh, Do you remember that first game where the Oilers wanted an OT? How could I forget? Wait, first game? Yeah, the first game of the series. No, the first game of the series was 9-6. Uh, I, I streamed it. Which series do I have up? I think you might be looking at it in the wrong order. It was 9-6. The Oilers had... No, the Flames had a 6-2 lead, I think. And they blew it, almost blew it, heading into the third. Oilers made it 6-6 at the beginning of the second. Flames scored three. There was that funny Evander Kane, Oliver Shillington meme. And it was the only game of the series the Flames won. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I have I have that one. But I'm trying to figure out which, which series Google is given... Are they giving you one from like the eighties? No, no. Like I, <laughs> this is the right one on Hockey Reference, the nine nine six and everything. And then what's this series where the Flames <laughs> May twenty sixth, twenty twenty two? That doesn't make sense. Round two, Edmonton wins four one. Yeah, that said, was they they won the series four one. Yeah, it's yeah. saying the first game was five to four, but that's not the correct score. Nope. It was it was uh, nine six. Anyway, it broke their brains. Yeah. That's weird. Maybe it broke my brain and I don't remember it properly. 5-4 is the last game. Maybe it's in reverse order. 5 four. Ah, we got it. We with got the, it. With got the it. weird Zadorov goal they just, on... Um, they just list the games in reverse order. Ah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, no, it broke their brains. Yeah, that 9-6 game is what I wanted to get to. Broke their brain, were, they, yeah. were they won but felt horrible after? Yeah. <laughs> <It was> so, <laughs> like, yeah like, they were up 6-1? 6-2, uh, to one? Uh, six, two, I think. Oh. You blew a four-goal lead. Hey, man. You needed nine goals, and I want to say a Matthew Kachuk hat trick. I've been there. I get it. I've seen I've seen leads evaporate. I get it. No, um, it. Markstrom was terrible. Matthew Kachuk did really? have a hat trick. Blake Coleman had two goals. Uh, what a game. Dreisaitl had... Hyman had two. No, was, that was the series where Markstrom's glove was made of construction paper. And just... <laughs> It just pucks <laughs> kept going through it. Um, it was not good. And then the next season, he was brutal um, and kept misplaying the puck. He basically funded dang it's. And then that's that's why I had to leave Sportsnet. I was like, we've done them all. Because, <laughs> because of Markstrom, we've, we've done them all. We used up three years worth of dang it's on this goalie. Well, look at the penalties from this game. Which, which the game third, is the first the one? The third period penalties. Uh, yeah, Kane and Shillington went at it. Uh, Kachuk as the third man in, you don't say, uh, Kachuk <laughs> delay of game. And then, uh, at the very end, Josh Archibald, who I forgot about Michael Backlund, Zach Cassian, Milan Lucic, Got two four. penalties. Yeah. I hate those. Those aren't penalties. You, do you, mean? you, I can't serve penalties in a time period that doesn't exist. Uh, you hate the, you, the, the, it's the end of the game and the game's over and you're getting, uh, rough and penalties. I think if you take even a minor penalty at the final horn, it should come with an automatic fine. Maybe suspension. I don't mind that. What? Not, like, a, not suspension. Suspension is ridiculous. Well, okay. Then a fine. A fine makes sense because there should be some sort of penalty because you are being assessed a penalty that you cannot serve. Well, it's the playoffs. We got to play these guys at least three more times. I'm going to take my free punch. Mm -hmm. Whack. It's free. It's completely free. Oh, I got two minutes. Mm. You didn't really <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to go to the locker room. <laughs> yeah, there's no. I don't even have to go to the game. box. Yeah. I don't even have to go to the box. Yeah. Be a league. I don't mind that, <laughs> that rule. Be a league. It'd be like twenty five hundred bucks, but at least it's something. At it's least it's something. Not nothing. It's not you're just going home, taking off your clothes. You know, like that's. Yeah, I, it it should be something more than worth it. Yeah, they're not even saying worth it. What yeah. price did they pay? It doesn't make sense if if you get into a scrap, they just head to the locker room. No, you, no. Okay, legitimately. Someone with Matthew Kachuk in fantasy mm -hmm. paid a steeper price than Matthew Kachuk. Unless your fantasy league counts penalty minutes as a positive stat. Unle which yes. is wild, Wh by the way. Which is silly. Mine does. Does it? Yeah, yeah. Because you want, because where our, our like, thinking behind that is you want to build a team. You can't just build it for offense, right? You can't, right. Our fantasy league isn't just, um, hey, you just get the best scorers in the league because that's kind of not how hockey's played. You right, know, you right. want to build a balanced line, so we count penalty minutes as a. So who's got stat. Brady Kachuk then? Um, because that'd be a big yeah. Brady one. Kachuk's one of the best. Like he always goes in the top half of the yeah. The draft, yeah. Justin Fisher of, and um, I made a fantasy pool one year, and we knew we made a mistake with the scoring system when someone drafted Zen and Kanopka in the first round. 
because we had it as penalties were positive. Mm -hmm. So that dude just fought everybody at the drop of a hat, and we were like, hmm. No, <laughs> but I think that maybe we that, screwed up. If, if hockey teams are building their franchises with guys who are gonna fight guys, it kind of makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, all the, all that to say, do something with the end of game penalties. That's so stupid. Mm -hmm. So sometimes for the new year, everybody's got their like resolutions, and I feel like sometimes they kind of go a little too hard. <laughs> what if all you needed to do was rehydrate yourself? Just hydrate. With liquid IV. Guys, you've actually used this in a physical setting. Yeah. I won a, a floorball championship with liquid IV. <laughs> so if you want to be a... That is like, that is a, an endorsement from an athlete. Yeah. Look at him. John Boy Look keeps the that. office stocked with that stuff and just all that running around. You need a rapid hydration. Like you need to get that uh, liquid back in your system. And liquid IV, like the little packet, you throw it in your water bottle, you shake it up, you drink it. It's fantastic. I'll have it when I'm just not feeling well. And like it just... Makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. It just seems to work. It gives me the stuff I was missing. They've got some new flavors too: white peach, green grape, lemon lime. Um, and it's it, like I said, Jesse kind of mentioned this. It comes pre, like you don't have to like measure it out. It just comes in a package in yep. your water bottle. They got an yeah. apple flavor. The apple's fantastic. Is that your favorite one? Yeah, I think so. Right now, I'm going through them all. I gotta, I gotta try them. But uh, right now, I think apple's ranking number one. I'm liking the green grape. Mm. There are no GMOs. There are eight vitamins and nutrients. There are no artificial sweeteners and zero sugar. And it's three times the amount of electrolytes of the leading sports drink. They will remain nameless. But Liquid IV won't. Rehydrate yourself for the new year. <laughs> Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplying sugar-free in bulk at a nationwide at Costco. Uh, or you can get 20% off your first order at liquidiv.com. Use the code DANGLE. Spelled how, guys? D-A-N-G-L-E. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today by using the promo code DANGLE at liquidiv.com, also available at Costco. Steve's dancing because All-Star Week's upon us. Is that what you call dancing? <laughs> so that's I'm excited. That's, that's, uh, that's actually not, how he danced at his wedding. That was what his first dance cool. with his wife that's was That's not like. what dancing yeah. is. Yeah. She was upset. <laughs> No and one would call that dancing. Yes, they would. <laughs> I'm getting hyped. Um, uh, February 2nd, February 3rd, Rec Room, downtown Toronto on Friday. Join us uh, for 2 p.m. for live shows with Agent Provocateur, Chris Johnson Show, obviously the SDP before the before the oh. NHL Skills Competition. Before! Before. Then on Saturday, February 3rd from 12 to noon, uh, sorry, no, sorry, at 12 noon, uh, we're going to be at the S we're gonna have the SDPN All-Star panel with Steve, uh, with Jesse, with myself, and an incredible lineup of guests. And we are not done there because Saturday night from 7:30 to 10, it is the SDP All-Star Party. Uh, after the final whistle, you can join us at Isabel's on King Street West, hang out, have a couple of drinks. And the whole point about all of this is we looked at the all-star game prices and we were like, we probably won't buy those. <laughs> and that's what we do for a living. That's it's it's so expensive. So we were thinking, why don't you just come out, hang out with us, fraction of the cost. You could still mm -hmm. be a part of the atmosphere, which is what we wanted. Uh, but, you know, you, you if you have tickets to the game, great. If you don't, you can just hang out and watch with us. And if you Steve need us, is going to be shirtless. I'm going to be shirtless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you need time. us to be our <laughs> silver medal, your silver medal, we will be that. If you need us to be your moose bouche we will be that. If you need us to be your full course, we will be that. February 2nd and 3rd in Toronto. I don't know what a moose bouche is. I don't know. You either. don't know what a moose bouche is? Is it a panettone flavor? No. It's a moose bouche. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't. A panettone would not be a good moose bouche. It's like an appetizer. Oh. Yeah. You've never heard of a moose bouche? I've heard of hors d'oeuvres, but not moose bouches. Well, we will be your horses dovers. Uh, at SDPN Sports for updates. But obviously, if you want to get tickets to the event right now, it's in the description of this video. Or if you're listening on Google, Apple, Spotify, wherever, uh, you can see it in the description. The link is there. Get your tickets now because they are going real fast. And we're so excited to see you. Yesterday, Ryan Reeves was activated from the IR. Was, wasn't that crazy? The I don't, well, timing. it's because oh. Bertuzzi is out because his wife is due to give birth oh. any minute now. Mazda, maybe, congrats, <laughs> maybe somebody publicly said, I'm healthy, and then they're like, oh shit, we can't hide him on IR anymore. But like, they weren't getting any benefit from having him on IR, were they? Or was yeah, it LTIR? Oh, yeah. he was on LTIR. The roster, no, on IR, the roster spot. Yeah. But Bertuzzi. I don't know. Bertuzzi's now <laughs> off the roster, and they've brought Reeves back on. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah, but Bertuzzi doesn't count toward the roster. Yeah, and While he's going. neither did Ryan Reeves. Oh. So they've made a roster spot and they've had to bring back the guy so they don't have to go through this whole health thing of proving that he's injured. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> I know this is not. <laughs> what, I, don't, I think so it's bad. pretty clear what had to happen. Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> oh, no. I know I shouldn't be thinking this way, but there have been so many complications with LTIR and the CBA. I'm like, at this point, I'm like, who's playing? Just tell me who's playing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm bored. T- tell me who's playing. I think it's fascinating that the Leafs got uh, a little tap on the shoulder and had to make things right. Well, <laughs> it's just it's fishy. the The thing that I like, I we went through this yesterday, but I think it's fascinating that you rarely see it out of this Leafs organization, this little regime here, where players are publicly complaining, and you have these public events fold out and Ryan Reeves went public with it with with Luke Fox and now all of a sudden they have to make things right and it's just so rare that usually we're sitting here talking about X team in the National Hockey League and we're like oh PR nightmare but this time it's the Leafs it's kind of funny yeah well I mean it's it's also the Leafs <laughs> this is why the Leafs don't let you talk to their players exactly like they're never gonna give like if we were in a different market we'd be able to talk to players but the Leafs are like no <laughs> no because why would we let you talk to players things can go wrong and as much as this is a, a minor, small thing that really probably doesn't affect them much in the long term, I'm sure it's an annoyance that they'd prefer not to have. And it does make me wonder about the future of Ryan Reeves, because as, as the lineup looks this morning and in line rushes yesterday, he wasn't in the lineup uh, and he's not. not playing. It's Nice Matthews, Marner, Holmberg, Tavares, Nylander, Robertson, Domi, Yarncroak, McMahon, Camp, Drager, which are... Gre- Drager. Gregor, Gregor, um, <laughs> like, Darren Drager suiting up, uh, uh, and then Brody Riley, McCabe, Lilligren, and Benoit Timmins. Still, so I I'm just thinking that when you look at the the Leafs lineup, it's like that's the lineup that's given them the most success, except for Connor Timmins. Timmins, by the way, uh, picking up a fine. Oh yeah, for the cross check on uh, yeah. who was it? I don't on remember. Seattle, but they punish those now. Twenty five hundred bucks, crazy. Yeah. Um, and to answer your question about roster size, Steve, they are at twenty three of twenty three roster positions, and Bertuzzi and Reeves made the swap, so they're still at twenty three of twenty three. So when Bertuzzi comes back, they're going to have to make a there's, move. There's a decision to be made. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Extremely interesting. Now, I don't love Benoit Timmins, mm-hmm. um, but I will say they played a real good game mm-hmm. against Seattle. Um, so. I mean, I guess stick with it. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. And I mean, in terms of getting guys rest, I don't think you get them a game on, get them a game off, get them. A, no, do two or three. Um, like, I, I think Geo needed more than one game. You know, would I have made it Timmons? Not necessarily. Maybe if they had lost, I'd go for Lagason, but they won. So keep Timmons in there. Well, I understand the rationale. Yeah. Holmberg, Tavares, Nylander makes me want to puke. <laughs> I understand. Uh, Sammy will start. Uh, he talked yesterday about how his dad said uh, that he said, you have to fight for this. You have to do it for your family. You have a kid. And he said it's a major part of his motivation. Uh, he says he feels motivated and ready to go in every night. How aren't you cheering for him with your whole chest? I know. I've always really liked this guy. Yeah. No, he's, he's always just seemed like super happy go lucky and uh this is his biggest test of the season big time yeah this so is friggin jets yeah and the friggin jets are friggin good he's gonna have to be one of the best players on the ice there's, yes there's no other way around it yeah and i i i wonder what the thing i'm looking for tonight is is attention to detail i really i really want to watch how detailed they are especially when they don't have the puck and i know that sounds super generic but the leafs there's questions about the relationship with Keefe. There's questions about if he's an effective coach or if it's a team issue or whatever. And you can fall on whatever side you want. If they're not playing detailed hockey, that is a problem. Mm-hmm. That is a problem. And whether or not the coach deserves it, you could be sliding towards removing the coach. I'm interested in the physical aspect of this game. Okay. Um, because... Listen, the Jets are probably, based on their record, the more skilled team, Mm -hmm. top to bottom, right? Leafs maybe have the better high-end talent. They're the better team top to bottom. Uh, What usually happens to the better team? (laughs) You try to beat the shit out of them. Yeah. 
The Leafs are used to being on the other end of that. Being beaten up. Yes. So, you know, this is... It's going to be an interesting role reversal here. Like, they're they're in a little streak of games where you're playing teams that are clearly better than you. The the Jets are clearly better than them. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. You got to beat the shit. The Leafs are the fourth best team in Canada this year. Uh, the Canucks, the Oilers, the Jets, the... Li I mean, where's the argument? Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. Where's the argument? I like how you ignored Adam saying that we're trending towards them getting rid of the coach. Because I think that's a very interesting... Like, if they if they go out there and they throw up stinkers against these good teams, is it more, is it more like, evidence that Sheldon Keefe is the problem? Uh, I just... I, I would never call him the problem, but yes. I... Unlike you, apparently, <laughs> listen to the Chris Johnston show. Uh huh. And uh, until he says there's a crack in the armor, I'm just going to continue business as usual. Hmm. Now, listen, they get smoked back to back games by the Jets. Yeah. Because I then, think the conversation starts. Don't you sit there and you say, okay, here's proof against a very good team that you can't hold your own? There, there have been. Ups and downs this season where you go, maybe, mm -hmm. and maybe not. Um, I think if the Jets smack you around for two games, <laughs> yeah. Are you There's... sitting there Sunday morning doing the, or Sunday, I guess, into the wee mornings if you're filming the LFR late and you're like, you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. He's well, got to go. Well, pull <laughs> Here, pull up their schedule. Because sure. now I think what we can do is look at the games that they have remaining heading into the All-Star break. Right? Are you, are you going to fire your coach going to the All-Star break? That no. you're hosting? Yeah. <laughs> but but let's see what they got. It's these two against uh, the Jets Wednesday, Saturday. Right. Okay. And, then you and got, you've got lots of rest there too. Then you got nothing. Then you got the All-Star break. Wow, that's it? Yeah. Yep. No. Yep. They're off. After Saturday, the Leafs do not play again until February okay. 5th. Oh, wow. So, Which Steve is doing a live stream for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, you get you get smacked around by the Jets, and that's how you go into the All-Star break, and then you get to be alone with your thoughts. <laughs> then you... <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is never good. Never good. You host the Islanders. That's a fascinating one that we are going to be streaming. Their first time playing the Islanders with Patrick Waugh as coach. They weren't able to beat them when they had the other guy, so maybe this is to their advantage. Uh, then you have the Dallas Stars. Boy, there's a lot of tests in there. That is back to back to back to back. Then you get the Sens. Who we'll always play you hard. God's sake, beat them. If they lose to the Sens, new head coach on Sunday. The Man, you can't give the Senators fans that. You can't give that to them. Uh, we got your head. We're we're terrible, but we got your head coach fired. We win the cup. Well, we they, can't have that. You you're can't heading, let them do that. No January cups you're, or February. You're heading into a stretch of essentially six home games coming yeah. out of the All-Star game. So you don't have to go anywhere for the All-Star game. You stop that. So stop it. Well, you don't. No, he's, he, he called the Ottawa Senators road game a home game. Well, Steve is, you, di Steve is dissing your franchise. Islanders are at home. The Stars are at home. <laughs> the Sens building is you could drive there and it's going to be filled with mostly your fans. It's <laughs> then it's three straight actual home games. <laughs> then you go on a road trip. Then a home game in St. Louis. Like there's I mean. I'm sorry. If you have a rough stretch and then you lose to the Ducks at the end of it at home. Mm. Urgh, this is a big evaluation period coming out of the All-Star game, man. They got to go like four and two, I think, to be happy with that six game home stretch. I mean, you're at home. You, sh you should expect to beat the Ducks. You should expect to beat the Blues. The Flyers are somehow second in their division. Um, and then you got to get at least one win against I mean Jesus you need to beat the Sens for God's sake the, then you got to get at least one win against the Islanders Stars or Flyers come on four and two and we're talking about them evaluating themselves against the Jets why shouldn't you expect to beat all all of them fuck it win six straight no I'm kidding <laughs> well, you expect <laughs> to go 82 and 0 I mean you're hosting the Stars if yes. you think you're a team worthy of playoff contention you should be looking at all those games going, we're the favorite. I, I think four and two is perfectly acceptable, Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah, but will they? 
And that is the question. And that's why we hang around and watch the games. Uh, Brassois Steve- tonight, too. Not Hellebuck, right? <sighs> Which I love. Yeah, I love they get the, uh, Brassois has been incredible. So I know. I don't yeah. think that changes much. Because they, they play excellent team defense, and then they have two great goaltenders. That doesn't change much. But it's still better than playing Hellebuck. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Well. But you'll get Hellebuck on hockey night. <laughs> guess what that means? Shit. Guess what that means? You better win this one. Yeah, that's very, very true. Very, you very better true. win this one. Uh, very true. Um, Vancouver's lotto line is struggling. Um, this is I thought this is really interesting. Uh, in the three home games since they came home from a road trip, and this is according uh, according to uh, Sportsnet. Um, uh, let me pull this up here. The three games: uh, Miller, Pedersen, and Besser have been outshot eighteen to four at five on five. And generated an expected goals for of 26%, 35%, and 26%. In their last game, which was a uh, 2-0 win against the Blackhawks, mm-hmm. they all played in and around 15 minutes. And Rick Tockett has made it clear he's considering splitting them up. Isn't that wild? That's a challenge to your guys. Like, that is... <laughs> That's going to happen, by the way. Yes, it's but happen. to me, that's the true hallmark of a good team. Actually, oh, because they can keep winning. Well, yes, you're going through these struggles. Your coach isn't happy. Your top line's not producing. You're still winning. That's the true hallmark of a good team. The bar is way above most teams' heads. Um, it, it believe it or not, I think is tremendous news for Vancouver. What's more likely, they stay garbage mm-hmm. or they return to form? They return to form, of course. And yeah. your uh, your best players are going to have bad nights. They are. Uh, the Leafs, like the Canucks can afford it. The Leafs can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. You can that's, be... that's why we ride the shit out of them. Um, the Canucks. No, they're fine. Yeah. They're fine. We forget, too, that the lotto line isn't how they played for the beginning of the season. It's something that Talk had invented uh, partway through because it used to be uh, Pedersen, uh, Mikheyev, and I forget who was on the wing. Uh, Kuzmenko. Well, really? Kuzmenko no. was on the other side. So. This was something that was working like extremely well and they kept going with it. But maybe it's time you split up your best players and you go back to what works, you know, because I think we we look at something like Edmonton. We always go back to the Oilers because they have dry saddle McDavid. But having those guys separate is more dangerous. You want more weapons throughout your lineup and probably splitting up Miller and Pedersen long term is better for success for the Vancouver Canucks. I, I also think when you basically exclusively kick ass. You have to um, create an. Uh, you got to yeah. be like Tom Brady. The world didn't think we yeah. could do it. You have to have the most dominant. You have team to in manufacture history. a dragon to slay. Well, this one might not be manufactured though. This this one from Ian McIntyre. The lotto line was outshot five to one at five on five while playing most of their minutes against Jason Dickinson, Colin Blackwell, and Joey Anderson. What if they just weren't trying? <laughs> I mean, you got yeah. you, you do have to ask the question. <laughs> what, what was the final score? <laughs> Two nothing, Vancouver. Yeah, they shut them out. Come guys. on, what if they just weren't trying? Five one. Pedersen played like sixteen minutes last night. Yeah, they Five, all they all played less than, yeah. than like yeah. <laughs> like I just I just I'm bringing it up. Bringing Here's it up. okay. They <laughs> held their opponent to five shots even strength. How about that? I know they only got one. <laughs> yeah, but the opponent is Blackwell, Anderson, and uh, 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 Dickinson. They were dogging it because there's 82 games, and that's so many games. You think so? Yes. Okay. They All won right. two nothing. It's fine. Um, Demko so so good. It's the Blackhawks. It's the Blackhawks. Uh, <laughs> it's the Blackhawks. We were talking about Pierre Luc Dubois yesterday, and uh, and I'm going to use that to segue into Montreal in a second here. But just to follow up. Oh, was he going there again? Uh, no, no. Um, uh, Shevel Dayoff talked to Pierre Lebrun for The Athletic. And he said uh, when he talked about the trade, because everybody thought and I think it fair enough. Everybody was like, well, is this the end of the Winnipeg Jets run as we know it at the end of last year? Bonus getting on the mic. And going. And then they lose Blake Wheeler intentionally in free agency, mm-hmm. uh, which they did try to trade and they couldn't. Uh, and then they trade Pierre Luc Dubois, and he said you have to change the paradigm and look at it from a different perspective. He's talking about his own organization. The opportunity to make that trade with the Kings uh, helped us a lot in a lot of different ways with the organization: young players, veteran players, depth, and a feeling that we've got a good lineup. We want to keep pushing here. And he, he paused and he added, "Whoever wants to be a part it, a part of it, let's try to make them a part of it. Whoever wants to be a part of it, sorry. So, so basically." What he's leaving out is whoever doesn't want to be a part of it, 
you can leave. Pack your shit. <laughs> yeah. And and I I I don't really blame them for that. The the thing with with the uh the uh, the kings and Pierre Luc Dubois is they're married now. Well, like he's been struggling basically all season. Yeah. And we ignored it. You know why we ignored it? They were winning, so who cares? Like if you're if he's overpaid, what you're still getting wins. Who cares? Right. You're the best road team in the NHL. They didn't lose a road game until like December or something like that. Like who cares? Who cares who's struggling? The final result is we still win. Yes. The, let the coaches care. Let management care. It's something that you're going to have to fix down the line. Now they're spiraling. They're in a bit of a tailspin. Mm -hmm. It's a problem now. It's a problem. They have to, everyone has to pull their weight. And this is a situation that should be impossible for Dubois to fail at. You're huge. You're 25. You're on the team with probably the best center depth in the NHL. And so either you're playing high up in the lineup with guys who have a style that complements yours well, and you're going to pick up goals that way, or you're playing deeper in the lineup and you get to feast on lesser competition. There's no reason for Dubois to be failing in LA. None mm -hmm. that we're aware of. Certainly I'm battling an injury an issue. I don't know. This guy should be, I mean, McClellan saying he needs to be better hints at the fact that there are no other issues other than you got to be better. At what point do you get the, right now he's got this stamp of pain in the ass. At what point do you tattoo it to his forehead? Columbus pain in the ass. Stop playing. Got traded. Winnipeg pain in the ass. Trade me. I don't want to be here. He's got two goals in his last 12 playoff games. Has never scored 30 goals. Makes eight and a half million for eight years. Career high, 63 points. So he's still being paid 63 points. He's still being paid for potential. Well, for being a third round, third overall pick, excuse me. I mean, he's listen, going backward. Yeah. Yeah. Like this guy was drafted, if I'm not mistaken, was he not drafted ahead of... Uh, no, the Leafs drafted first overall that draft. It went Matthews. I think it was Matthews, Line, Line a, a. Dubois, Pouliarvi. Yeah. Wasn't it? Someone fifth, Matthew Kachuk. And that's the thing is that this guy. Matthews, went, Line, a, Dubois, Pouliarvi, Ole Ulevi, Matthew oh! Kachuk. Whoa! Clayton Keller, Alex Nylander, Mikhail Sergachev, Tyson Jost. That's the top 10. Of Mikhail the Sergachev was the same draft NHL as draft. Matthews. Wow. Why did I think he was like four years older? Well, because... Oh, Sergeyev? Oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Oh, maybe because he was traded for Drew Ann. It's a pretty good draft in terms of games played. Like <laughs> It's not <laughs> bad. A lot of, that's a lot of people playing a lot of games already. You and don't usually see that through the first round. This this close. It's to not a bad season. top 10. No. No. Yeah. It's been better, but like, it's not bad. And... Uh, and I'm just I'm I'm comparing Dubois stats to others. Like, dude, you should not. There's no reason for him to not be completely tearing the Pacific Division limb from limb. And it's not working. It isn't. Nope. Um, I want to use that to segue into his preferred team. At least that was the rumor in Winnipeg. And when we were at the Montreal draft, he was there. I think fully expecting to be traded at the draft, and it never happened. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens are mad about losing. <laughs> now, I find this good perplexing. Uh, I know. I Listen, I good for them. Jack I, Pearson, and uh, Kovacevic are back in the lineup. Um, I believe, yeah, Josh Harrison. Uh, is it Jesse Yelonen or, or Jesse Yelonen? I don't know. Yelonen. Yelonen. Yeah. Um, Yelonen will be out. Jake Allen will be in goal. Um, Ar Arbor Jack I, I guess Canadiens fans love him because he's he goes around and busts bodies. But if you look at the advanced numbers... They're great. Mm. Um, but he does give personality. That's a guy who's a complimentary player on a playoff team who beats the shit out of people. What I love yeah. about the Montreal Canadiens is they were supposed to be what Ottawa is. Except Ottawa, like uh, Montreal was intentionally trying not to be that great. Uh, they also don't have a lot of talent on their roster. At some point, you got to take a step. Like yeah. it's not disastrous that they're losing, but you can't just... You're not supposed to bottom out for three straight years. And ask the Anaheim Ducks about it. 
I don't think they mean to still be shit. They're just they just happen to be that. I think Canadians fans are getting sick of it because there's nothing like nothing moving them forward here. There's not like, oh, that's positive. This is great. Uh, Slavkovsky is working out or, or uh, Nick Suzuki took another step or Caulfield took a step. There's nothing there to grasp onto. And you're right, Jesse. And you know what I don't feel? Bad for them. Uh, in the last half decade, you've seen Stanley Cup Finals games with your team in it. In the last half century, you've seen how many cups? Even in 1993, you won a cup. You were the last Canadian team to do it. I don't feel bad for you. I know it's been frustrating. Boo hoo! They're rebuilding. Like, like, like they're they're rebuilding. Honestly, has been, Montreal. It's been such a have your cake and eat it too process. Most teams who bottom out do not go straight from appearing in the Stanley Cup Final to. And now we're going for lottery picks. Yeah. Right? But it seemed to be pretty much by design. Like New Jersey's Cup at 95, I don't think they made the playoffs the next year. They didn't. But I think they were like injured and stuff. <laughs> that does happen, right? And then they went right back to being the Devils. Yeah. And they were the champions within half a decade. Yeah, a couple of times at least. Yep. Was it two or three that they won in that stretch? Uh, they got... Before the, before the lockout. 95... Uh, 2002? Two no, 2000, I think. 2000. 2002 was the Red Wings. Okay. 2001 was the Avs, who beat the Devils in the final. Wow. And then I, th I want to say the Devils and Stars played each other a couple times in the final. Like, dude, they were incredible. They were, yeah. yeah. If you look at the Montreal Canadiens numbers, they're just not good at anything this season, and it's very bleak. You know, they're, they're 28th in goals for, 29th in goals against, 20th on the power play, and 28th on the penalty kill. So just every aspect of their game, they're amongst the bottom of the teams. I, I think a lot of people are being mean towards Yuri Slavkovsky. However... I do think there are some Habs fans who are grading them on a curve, right? And I think there's some frustration there because sometimes you get the first overall pick and you draft LeBron James. And sometimes you get the first overall pick and you draft Andrea Bargnani. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily that Slavkowski was the wrong pick. It's just some years, that's who's available at number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, Has anyone from that draft completely blown us away just yet? Not really. Not really. No. Like, there's a bunch of real good players, and they might turn out great, but none of them are completely shooting the lights out right now. Now, Jesse, we have time for a press conference? Oh, we definitely do. Let's do it. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Um, I'd say right now the redrafted number one pick of the 2022 draft should be third overall, Logan Cooley going number one. So who leads that draft in points? In terms of points? Career points. Your are Slavkovsky. With? But he's played 86 games and he has 28 points. Logan Cooley's played 45 games, has 22 points. Yeah, this is like election night when they're like, all right, 3% uh, of the vote has come in. Mm-hmm. And someone you've never heard of is going to be president. And if you look at just the guys who have played in the NHL, remember, 2022 draft is very recent. Very recent, <laughs> yes. There's only been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys who've played in the NHL from that draft so far. Wow. So there's so much time for these stars to emerge. Guys like Connor Geeky, um, they should cut her Gauthier's in that draft. Owen Pickering, who I liked. Um, that year. There's a lot of Rutger and McGordy. Like, he's in that draft. Only There's two non um, only two non first round picks have played in the NHL. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of time for the actual the stars to emerge from that draft. So who knows where your Slavkovsky ends up on that final list. But yeah. David Juracek, by the way, healthy scratch. Again? Yep. Still? Yep. Thanks. Yeah, that was uh that was interesting. Well, you know what they say about the Blue Jackets. Well run. I think they did the same to Andrew Peake, didn't they? Mm. Just like, oh, well, we're going to have you up, but we're not going to play you. Just, just We don't want to get better. We want to get worse. And there's just an old man sitting outside of that building with a loaf of bread feeding all the lame ducks. Oh, They're all getting stop tired. It. <laughs> they're all getting canned at the end of the year. Oh, and man. they're just... The moment... They play their final regular season game. Everyone's getting fired. Yeah. This question is from Red Shark Pack. They want to know, can we get an update on the status of Adam's paddleboard? 
Uh, it's at my wife's family's cottage. Okay. <laughs> and currently, it's being used by children. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you know it's a it's a good paddleboard, but I wouldn't call it like you know you top you of the spend, line. Yeah, it's not a top of the line like bamboo, super light, whatever you know, whatever it is yeah. that people are using these that's, days. That's what you look for. And so yeah, so currently they use it to jump on and try to push each other off. That's, that's, well, that's if, if it you is floating there, there. If you weren't there for the moment that Adam bought a paddleboard, he declared himself a paddleboard guy. And this was going to be his new thing. And he was going to go paddleboarding on Lake Ontario every morning at 5 a.m. Well, I couldn't do that because I was doing the morning show. And then I, what happened? Uh, I just never used it. <laughs> <laughs> have you? I flat out never used it. Not once. Adam, you never, ever have that friend I, I, I who's have, like, this is my new thing. And then yeah, they, they give I, it up in the day. To this day, I still have never set foot on it. <laughs> Even with the kids thing, like I don't get up on it. I just let the kids get up on it and make sure they don't kill themselves. I I, I have a, a very dad question. Sure. Ask. Yeah. Do you ever feel a pressure to live up to your kids' perception of you? Aww. Oh, yeah. Aww. Yeah, because right now you're like... You're, you're a hero. You're like, well, you're like a heroic cardboard cutout. Yeah, you're super... Because they don't really pay attention to you. They don't know much no. about you. But they do know that they have to listen to you. So Because I uh, took out a paddleboard this summer. Yeah. And Leo sat on it while yeah. I was paddling around and we didn't fall off. Really? Which I think makes me basically an Olympian. And it's something that I hope is a core memory. For I, I love that. That's yeah. great. And I'm just asking if you've done that forever. No, my daughter is better dad. My Let's daughter's go. afraid of. Uh, Let's go. My daughter's afraid of her shadow. If the wind blows the wrong way, she starts crying. So when it comes to things like tobogganing or biking or things like that she gets really nervous so you have to take it really slow um she basically just screams uh so i yeah. i uh i'm just waiting for her to be ready leo that makes baby. any sense leo's a big water baby so okay oh no she loves swimming that's the one thing she's no fear around the water zero oh. no fear it's heights it's anything that she believes can cause her physical harm which i haven't told her that water can be dangerous <laughs> So I, I, you know, so what you don't know, can't hurt. You. Exactly. <laughs> so she's in her life vest and she's out there and she's got her swimming lessons on Tuesday nights. Mm. That's what we do. All right. This question is from at wicked underscore Fridays. I hope you have wicked Fridays, Joe. Is Steve a Sharks truther again? They're on a three game winning streak. So I'm checking in. What do you, what do you mean again? <laughs> yeah, you never, you never, never got off, did you? Listen, well, what's their name? Joe, Joe, the truth doesn't take time off. All right. The truth has always been out there. I am a shark's truther through and through. They went through a bit of a blip. And here's where they hit back. These sharks have bite. <laughs> These sharks have bite. I always love the sound of those piranhas in uh, Donkey Kong. What you just did. Oh, no. They they do. They do the, the teeth. Yeah. Is that bothering people? It, it bothers me. I don't like it. You don't? I don't want to do it again. Jesse, what do we got? <laughs> this next one comes from Emily. Let me just pull it up here. Emily writes, my college has a course on the Hockey Hall of Fame and hockey in general. Really? That's also, awesome. I wish I took that. Incredible. One of our questions we need to talk about is if hockey players are paid too much money. I want to know your guys' opinion on this topic. First of all, don't use our opinions in your paper or whatever because we're dumb, but here are our opinions. Yes. Uh, what Jesse said is, I think, the long and short of it. But <laughs> allow me to uh, interject my stupid opinion. Um, I think I what I imagine your question is based off of and a uh, talking point that I imagine your professor gave you is pro hockey players and professional athletes in general should not make as much as doctors or nurses and surgeons and things of that nature. And uh, I think uh, one thing can be true. All of those people should be paid more and held in higher esteem in our society. But hockey players compared to their peers as in terms of pro athletes are underpaid. Mm. Um, like, yes, I will sign up for that underpaid life where I make league minimum, which is $775,000. If you had a five-year NHL career and you made $775,000 the whole five years, how long could you ride that for? 
You long know, time. Long time. And then you 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 know you open a hockey school or something and you charge some triple A kids like an insane amount of money. You'll be fine. Mm. You'll be and you use the fact that you were in the NHL forever, you'll be fine. Um, but hockey players make a lot of money because they make their team's owners a lot of money. Um, so no, I, I don't think they're overpaid. If you're going to charge tickets for people to watch me, if you're going to sell jerseys with my name, if you're going to sell stuff with my likeness on it, mm -hmm. fucking right. You're paying me. One thing I sure. always, I always bring up when people talk about the pro sports salaries and the athletes making the money. One is the athletes are the reason you go to the building. Yes. You know, they deserve the money that's being generated. And if you look at a single game of an NHL team, the Leafs are at the very high end of what they generate on a single game. Mm -hmm. That number is usually in the $3 million area. One home game generates $3 million in profit Out for the 41. Toronto Maple Leafs. So the fact that the guys on the ice are the reason you're going to the game if they generated $3 million, they deserve a large sum of that money. And that's just the realities of what the team can bring in. So it's just the nature of, hey, this is what this business makes. So they deserve some of that money. And if they're not getting the money, then who should it go to? The billionaire who owns the team? Who has yeah, let's save those guys some money. Right? So but if somebody's getting the money, it should be like the staff and the team and the players. I would like uh, the question to be, are the team owners paid too much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's my short and long answer. Yeah. They make too much money for these guys to not be making money. Yes. You know, if you want them to be paid less, then hockey has to make less. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. That's yeah. Also, where can I take that course? <laughs> that sounds incredible. There there are a few like famous courses across Canada. Um there's that one. Um but uh I think it's McGill University. Um, they offer a course that is um, the Montreal Canadiens as a religion. Mm, that's cool. Fascinating. I would love to take that. There's, I mean, they're the most unique hockey market in the history of the sport. Yeah. It's, yeah, no, it's we fascinating. We can end on this one because I know, Adam, you have some, I wouldn't say strong opinions, but you have oh. some opinions on uh -oh. this matter. Okay. This is from Scorton underscore boy underscore 17 on our Discord. With today's, which was yesterday's, announcement of Netflix broadcasting WWE Raw for the next 10 years in a deal worth $5 billion, do you think that the NHL rights in Canada could follow suit? Adam could not have sent us this story fast. <laughs> I have been today. saying this for he years. so excited. Um, <laughs> I've been saying this for years, and, and I, I, I stick to it. I think what's going to happen, and I was talking to somebody about this last week, so I'm taking their information a little bit and their insights. Uh, is that a streamer is going to get the national rights in Canada? They have all the damn money. Yeah, and so so I mean I mean if Rogers I guess really wants to step up or Bell really wants to step up and take it, which I find hard to believe no. because they haven't made it like Bell Rogers. Sorry, Bell, which owns TSN, has done really well with regional rights. So whatever regional rights they have, I think it's the Jets, the Leafs, the Sens. Yes. Do they not have something out west too? I think it's just those three. Okay. I forgot. Um, they've done well with them, right? They've made they've made some good money there because the cost in isn't as expensive. Um, and TSN's product is really good, and it was well established before. Uh, Sportsnet took a they took they took their thing and they supersized it, and they had too many people, and then they had less people, and less people, and less people, and then you know they're taking Hockey Night Canada and trying to change it and make it work for themselves, and it's it, it was a lot of change all at once, and I think it threw people off, especially for an institution like Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think what happens here is the national games go to the streamer, and you have regional games going to TSN and Sportsnet, and I don't think there'll be a third player in the cable market, but there might be. And I know that bothers people because um, the regional blackouts thing will still exist. And that is annoying. And there needs to be a way around that. The problem is that the owners, uh, there is a team in Canada that's really, really big. A couple teams that have these really long entrenched fan bases. And because these long entrenched fan bases go back generations, uh, oftentimes the person who is cheering for this team may not even live in the location of this team anymore. Mm. And what can happen to smaller market franchises is that the teams, the big teams that have all these fans everywhere can basically eat the little teams alive when it comes to ratings. So the, the thought process, and I'm not saying that it's right, 
But the thought process You're is not saying it's what? It, right. Excuse me. I almost said wrong. Uh, the thought process is if you protect the local markets, make it legally unavailable to watch, even though that really doesn't matter anymore. The thought process is those rights in theory are then worth more money than they would be if you had no regional blackouts. Now, I don't get it. Just make it. I know. Free. I know. But they're but the local owners and I understand this are like, hey, I don't want my shit to value just because my team didn't start in 1917. <laughs> right. And I get that to a point. Um, I don't like that. You can't pay like a surcharge or something to watch regionally blacked out games. There should be something available. You legal. can. can On you? the Sportsnet, like they have like a grand package. Oh, it really? Gets you, yeah, it gets Super you Super Sportsnet? It gets you past the uh, other blackout. Oh, okay. See, yeah. that makes sense. Now people will... Oh, good. The solution is pay more? Yeah. Oh, people will be really happy. They'll be thrilled that. about that. Yeah. But at least For you can me, make it personally, it's at a price point that doesn't make sense. Yes. I would rather do illegal things. <laughs> If I'm trying to choice. watch the Jets on a Wednesday. Yeah, you know? yeah, I get it. I get it. But <laughs> if you're a, an intense Leaf fan and you live in Calgary and, and it's on TSN regionally and you can't watch it, you know, that that might be an option for you if you don't want to go, if you don't want to sail the seven seas. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, the, I would like, would you like to see a situation? Because the WWE, it's, it's fascinating because they went... Everything is on Netflix. Yes. You can't get it on TV at all. You got to go to Netflix. Would you want to see that with the NHL? Yes. Yes. Just I like want that. Not even on, not even, you can't but, even get the regional ones on sports or TSN. The it's problem. just Netflix. Problem with that is that the teams hold their own regional rights and that's been grandfathered in. So yeah, it's but you up change, to the teams. change it in the next CBA or something, you know? I don't know that they'll do that. There's no will to do that. And and what if the number is so absurd that they get? Well, these are it? guys that love making money. So yeah, I'm sure. You know? If the number's absurd, yeah, they'll be like, well, you know those scruples we had. I think in yeah. this fake reality, you come with a number that's goofy. You know, you come with the ten billion dollar number over the course of. Yeah. But that's seven what Rogers did. Rogers came with a goofy number it was mm-hmm. goofy it blew the nhl they could away. have bought star wars they could have bought star wars That's for a so billion and a half nuts. less 5.5 billion dollars over 12 years rogers could have owned star, they could star have. wars instead and there could be a NHL. statue of luke skywalker outside where the blue jays play 100 like, percent. they could have easily done it and yeah. i i so so the thing is is that rogers came in with the goofy number but what they when they even when they pitched us and they told us what they were doing. I was like, I don't know how they're going to make money here. And I was 25 at the time. Um, oh, they're yeah. like, well, we're going to do Sportsnet magazine and we expect subscriptions there. What? Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh, cable's going to be the only thing in cable that works is live event programming. Yes. And those audiences have been eroding for 10 years. We're going to hire Steve Dangle. There you so go. So you don't think Amazon could come in with a goofy number? Oh, they can. And everything's and, off TV it's, or Apple comes in with the goopy number. Everything's on Apple TV. And, and uh, what I, I think, co- I think that'd be cool. I think it's completely doable. And here's the thing for the streaming site. If you have hockey, you win. If for, for, because with Rogers, like their whole play was, how do we get more of our products in front of people? How do we get people on Rogers cable? How do we get people on Rogers cell phone plans? All those things uh, for, for Netflix, for instance, which doesn't have all the added benefits that Amazon Prime gives you, uh, but has better, I think some people say better content. Um, Netflix, that that elbows your app. Like if you're choosing a subscription, you got Disney, you got Apple, you've got Crave, you've got, uh, what else? Amazon Prime. If you're Netflix and people are ranking the, the, the ones that they're going to keep, if they get three out of five of them, they're going to keep the one with hockey if they're a hockey fan. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's where, that's the tantalizing thing. In Canada, yes, it's it's 10 times smaller than the United States. But we're now at almost 42 million people. It's grown a million to five in the last year. This market is quite big. Um, and it, it, my question is, what's the number that actually mathematically makes sense for these streamers? Because they are all numbers driven. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what that is. It can be goofy, though. Amazon doesn't give a shit if they make money off football. Right. They just want you to be on Prime. Amazon is the far more likely candidate than Netflix. They've already uh, dipped their toe into the NHL waters with the whole... The Bally thing, yeah. Bally thing, and they've already done live sports with the NFL. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's all eyes on Amazon. And and the one Netflix live event, remember we had to talk about this, was I think the Love is Blind reunion. 
and they couldn't even get that off the ground. So let Netflix oh, is yeah. going to have to learn live event well. programming. They uh, they did the their golf thing around the F one. Uh, do you remember it was right? The, was the, the drivers were paired up with, it with professional golfers, and they had their little thing in Vegas. I don't know how it went. Like I wasn't paying attention to that or yeah. anything. I didn't watch it. But. Yeah, but they you could tell they're dipping their toe in. Yeah, they also have a tennis event. I know they have a what live thing with with Rafa and and somebody, and they're doing that live oh. as well. Yeah, the the Netflix Cup, I think it's called. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's oh, that's funny. cool. Yeah. I like that. So. I like that. Yeah. So it's it's fascinating. I think uh, I think the rights thing in Canada is going to be fascinating, but I think ultimately that's how it'll go. I just don't know which streamer wants to take it, unless and again, if Bell and Rogers step up and go, no, we want it. They own the Leafs, <laughs> so they're they're a pretty prime. Ca- they're well connected. They have the inside the track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah so about- I, i'm happy for wwe fans oh it's great but it, wwe their 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 app and their streaming service was like the the precursor to all of this because they they offer this for for a long time now where you just get everything all these pay-per-views on the app for a very reasonable price yep. the cost of like two pay-per-views in the olden times when they were 50 bucks uh for the one i remember you know? that and now it was like yep. hundred dollars for the whole year and you get everything the only know? thing i hate is they don't call it a pay per view anymore. They call it a PLE, a premium live event. Ah, uh, yuck. <laughs> I like the I just idea. Don't like the name. It just it just sounds less less scary. Yeah. <laughs> if Netflix stays at nineteen ninety nine a month or whatever it is now, um, and you get everything, like you get all the pay per views, you get all the Raws and Smackdowns just on Netflix. I think that's awesome for about wrestling fans. Forty fifty bucks a month and all you get is sports. What's that? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see how it all plays out but that's what i think i think a streamer is going to come and take it and i think that'll be good yes be good. all-star tickets oh yeah. oh my god yeah we got the all-star event and and look in the description wherever you download your podcast or watch it it's there you can buy tickets get them now get them now no! now you don't want to be late no! <laughs> <laughs> the steve dangle podcast follow the guys on twitter at steve underscore dangle at adam w y l d e and at jesse blake connection complete